You can send information without patch cords by using the send and receive object. This allows you to create cleaner looking patches and do some recursive patching without um, patch, uh, patch cords going from the bottom of patches all the way to the top. I've got this really simple uh, patch here that will bang middle C, our favorite pitch, over and over, uh, creating uh, a note that's 500 milliseconds long, 64 uh, velocity. But you'll notice that I didn't give the Metro object um, a creation argument. So if I were to bang this right now, um, assuming I had a toggle, it would just bang at zero milliseconds. That's not too good. So let me create a toggle. So that'll start and stop the mechanism. And instead of connecting or typing in the argument next to Metro or connecting it directly to the inlet, I'll create it here to the side. So I'll make an argument of 500. And let's make an argument of let's see, 750. And I could easily connect these with patch cords to the inlet of Metro like so. Then remembering to bang them because they do have to be sent into Metro. I could start. Okay. I can accomplish this the same way by using the send and receive object. So I'll type S and then I type a custom name. I'll type in tempo. And what I'll do is I'll connect 500 and 750 into the S tempo. You'll notice that the send object doesn't have an outlet. That's because it's to receive data uh, to be, or I should say, it takes in data to be sent out. And then there is a proper receive object. And what you want to do is type in tempo. So the name after the R has to be the same as the name um, after the S, so it knows where to receive uh, the data from. Now I'll connect this to the inlet of Metro. And I'll tell you what, let's create a bang to the side so we can see that information has been received. All right, and lock the patcher. And you can see that when I bang 750, there's an indication that it is being received. So let's take a listen. So the way that I like to use send and receive is sort of like creating variables. For instance, if I wanted to make the duration of make note 90% um, of the tempo, what I would do is create another receive tempo, and you can create multiple. That's what's really nice about it. And I would connect it to a math object, so times 0.9 and connect that way and then connect that to the rightmost inlet of make note which is the duration argument let me clean this up a little bit okay and i'll create another bang to the side so that way we know that information is being received so if I bang 750, you see that it, it should have done the math. So that means the notes that play will be 90% of the rate. So there's a, a consistent note length regardless of tempo. Another cool aspect of send and receive is that you can send and receive from interface widgets by accessing their properties. So we'll create a knob. You get this Ableton style knob and we'll right click it and choose properties. Now in the knob properties you'll see an area labeled messages send a symbol receive symbol. So the idea is that I want to send from this symbol or I'm sorry send from the knob rather and so I'll send tempo and this matches here this send symbol tempo so that when I move this knob it's going to use the send tempo um, object so I'll create a range 500 to a thousand okay and you'll notice that there's a 
inlet at the top so we could pipe data in. But as I move this knob, you'll see that receive tempo is banged with each move. So we'll create a number outlet, or a number box rather, so that you can see what the data is. Now, so this is how you can start to prototype um, user interfaces for your patches um, with, with really clean results because there's no patch cord coming from this knob and it is a, uh, a really attractive uh, way to patch the, the data without the, the mess of wires and patch cords. In this example, I've got a small sequencer set up. Um, I've got all the arguments in place for my metros to be banged into the sequence. I do not have some uh, control mechanism for the pitches of my sequence, which are these two lists. So these lists are unpacked, sent into separate number atoms, and then using the modulo and the counter, the bangs are sent out um, with select. So what I'm going to do is I'll use send and receive in order to create a really a quick interface for the sequencer. So I'm going to use an H radio and I'll use that to select my tempo at the top and this is going to send out 0, 1, 2, 3, the index of the radio. So I'm going to choose select 0, 1, and 2 and I'll connect that to my tempo. Okay, I'll bring this entire patch down. Okay, and I will send out from the radio send tempo, just as I did previously. But this time it's going to send the index of the radio. I'll put a number atom to the side so we can see that. I'll move this to the upper corner. Right click it, choose properties, and I really only need um, three values, so three. And I'll give it a label, we'll call this tempo chooser. All right, and I actually I could have just, yeah, I'll tell you what, let's do this a little cleaner. We'll say tempo for the send and I'm going to get rid of that and just do the receive over here. This is the cleanest way to do this. And we'll use a number atom just because we really want to see that the data is coming out. We do this for debug purposes. So now if I lock the patcher we see that the choices are made. So what's happening is it selects zero, it bangs out this outlet, one, this outlet, etc. Okay, so now let's create an H radio for our sequence chooser. Right click it and choose properties. Um, let's do three again. And we'll say, uh, let's say the send symbol is sequence. Choose OK. Oh, forgot to type the label. Sequence chooser. OK. OK, and then connect a number atom. Looks like, hold on. <laughs> there we go. It left some visual garbage on the screen when I moved it. I'll just mask it. Okay, now we'll create a receive sequence and a select. Select 0, 1, 2. I only have two sequences, so the third one uh, won't do anything. I could create, if I wanted to, another list uh, but I won't. And so now when I bang this, 
you should see all of the number atoms below populate with whatever list is bang, so 0 or 1. And I won't create 2 just yet. And also, we got to hear the pitches. It's a, a nice chord. Okay. And another thing I'll change, I'll create a send for is the velocity. So for this, I'll create a knob and choose the properties. Say the output velocity from 30, I don't know, let's say 34 to 89. I'll call this um, velocity and give it a label. Note velocity. So this is going to send out different velocities and give it a number atom. Actually, we don't need that. And so we'll take it in the middle here, the middle inlet, and create receive velocity. And finally, I'll copy this and paste it and choose duration properties. I will say note underscore duration. Note duration. And ideally for this, the way I like to work is that this would be some sort of relationship to the tempo. Um, but since I know my longest note value is 750 in my, or um, the metro, the, the largest rate of the metro is 750, the shortest is 250. I could make the output range, you know, something like 200 to 700. It's, it's admittedly a bit random. And then receive note underscore duration. create number atoms for these so we can see what's going on. Okay. I'd like it to be neat. Okay, if I move velocity, then we see what's going on. It's sending floats. That's oh, okay. And then duration is going to send floats also. Now, since I just banged both of these, the first time I run the sequence, whatever number was banged last, here, let's say 64.16, and uh, let's say something short, 248. So these are the active values, not 64 and 500. Okay, now looking at it, we should be ready to go. So I'm going to bang, um, let's say 250. So we'll run it at... 250 milliseconds, so bang. It'll go into a counter, that'll start counting up. Um, it's got a modulo, so when it reaches the eighth value, um, it's gonna then reset. So this will keep counting up, but actually the modulo makes it reset. And I tape it just because I wanna make sure this is really clear. I'll create a number atom between, so that way you can see actually the relationship of the modulo to the select. Okay, I've already unpacked my lists into um, the sequence below, and so the select is then firing these off. Again, there's lots of different ways to do this. I could have done this with pure math, but keeping it really simple. Thank you.
So you'll notice that perhaps an unintended um, side effect of this is that the sequence chooser is going through unpack and then populating these number boxes. And then in turn, that's sending them all out as chords, uh, which is uh, admittedly a bit of a problem for this, but we'll, we would deal with that in another movie. Um, the point is rather that you can create these nice interface widgets that affect um, the main patch so that you can focus on just using this component of the window and not necessarily um, the nuts and bolts component.